Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jonathan, the content creator here at Mr. Pipeline, and thank you for joining us again for episode three of the Pipeline Podcast. I wanna get straight to it, 2025 marketing trend predictions. Guys, you have two of the best to ever know the world of digital marketing here with me today to share their expertise and to give you value. They don't need any introduction because from what I've seen at every single convention, they're the most popular people there. But Jacob, Evan, how's it going, guys? Awesome, man. It's always a pleasure. It is. Can't complain. From all your years of experience working with the clients, what is like a pretty crazy success story that you've recently heard? Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of success stories to share, but the biggest one that comes to mind, we were working with a gentleman. He's located in Texas, kind of a rural area, and he was just having trouble breaking through. He was sort of stuck at the same revenue level. And, you know, this year we just saw him at Gutter Summit, and he's been following a lot of our strategies. He is breaking $700,000 in revenue, and he's only 26 years old. So that was just mind-blowing for me to see some sort of growth like that, and he still has so much room to grow. I have a particular person in mind out of Tennessee who is on the, you know, on the outskirts of a populated area, but he was just himself just doing a lot of subcontracting work, meaning a roofer would call him, say, hey, I need some work, and they're only getting about half the profits from these jobs. Mm -hmm. So as we've talked over the months and as he did what I told him to do, implemented strategies as the time has gone on, this particular gentleman now has his own brand new vehicle, multiple trailers, um, now has his own revenue stream of leads coming in. So he's not just relying on the local contractors to sub him out work from going from literally just skating by and just getting by on a day-to-day -day basis, in other words, to now having a streamlined process of leads coming in, growing on Google, so on and so forth, to where he's no longer like the only guy, one man in a truck. Those are my favorite stories because we have a lot of those guys that we get out of that world of where they're stuck and they now can have the ability to invest in the trailers, invest in the crews, and so on and so forth. Yeah, and I know you have a lot of very recent ones as well. And just being behind the camera, following you guys around, I see it clearly myself, the success rate that you guys have, the people and the value that you give. And when people implement, or business owners implement these strategies, you see the evolution that they go from how they started when you, you know, they first started with you to where they're at now. What would you say are some of like the strategies that they, you know, the, like, you know, the heavy winning strategies that they use for their businesses that you provided for them? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is diversifying, but like in the beginning, you have to take the proper steps. So really developing yourself, your presence online, how people sort of view you, you know, people make a decision within a couple seconds online. So you only have just a few moments to really grab their attention and to get that customer in the door. Um, but other than that, it's really just expanding. Once you built your online and presence, you need some sort of lead generation, um, but diversifying that to not only rely on something like Google ads, implementing also Facebook ads, um, making sure you have an organic presence on social media, all these layers add up and sort of build that foundation to keep the success. Everything Jacob mentioned is you know spot on, but building out your website more for the organic side of the business. You know, one of the biggest things I personally hear is, of course, everyone wants to be rich, everyone wants a bunch of leads, everyone wants to make money. That's that's what it is, why we're all in business. But is building out the website for the content-based strategy by implementing more service pages, more city pages, more service-specific city pages, just content, 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 even whether it's you know blogs, this, that, and the other. Though this strategy may not be something that's going to turn your business overnight into something different, everyone's in business not just for the next year or two. Everyone wants to be in business for the next three to five to 10 plus years. Well, by implementing these content-based strategies and just getting your website more informed about the local community, local neighborhoods, this, that, and the other, this allows your website organic presence to grow over time without having to necessarily invest into it every single month. Now, I have clients that, well, we have clients that invest into our SEO services every single month, and then we have a select few who also top that by every month or every couple months, building out more city pages, in other words, and more content-based pages on their website for future growth. So I think that's one of the biggest things where clients like, you know, Evan, what else can I do besides everything where else we're doing? And I always say, more and more content. Content is king. 
-huh. Yeah, it's almost like all these extra pages are like little funnels that you're creating online. So like to have that organic presence. So if, imagine if you had a website that was only five pages large. You only have five funnels. If you had a website that was 50 to 100 pages, that's so many funnels that will eventually rank and then it will build up your domain authority, it builds up your organic presence, Google trusts you more. You know, it's just a snowball effect from there. So you really should think about organic, uh, especially going into the new year. And you know, some of the things that you've mentioned that you've seen in the previous years and going into 2025, it does sound like that's where the trend is gonna continue to go, regardless of where you put your money in, when it comes to ads, when it comes to putting more money into social media, you still have to have that organic presence. You still have to build that website and you still need to take time and growing it, posting more, posting more content out, blogs, videos and everything. Posting your Google profile and geotagging images, all this is content-based strategies for Google to help optimize your overall online presence. And speaking of Google, because one of the things that I've realized, you know, when we go out to our travels and everything, we hear a lot of speakers. And a lot of what they're like kind of saying right now is that with Google Ads, there is so much money to be put into it. It's getting more expensive. Mm -hmm. You're paying a lot more. But it seems like I guess a lot of business owners aren't seeing the return. Do you guys see that as well? Or where do you think Google Ads are today? So we're seeing the trend that the cost of marketing goes up over time. It's the same thing as inflation. Prices go up over time. Um, there's more of a demand for Google Ads, so more people are running the ads, which does drive up the cost. But what we're seeing is that people with larger budgets are actually performing better because Google is showcasing their ads more often. You're getting in front of more people. There's more metrics for us to work with when we make our optimizations. Um, so just keep in mind, if you're doing Google Ads, we're not just dipping our toes in the water. We're jumping all in. Yeah, I mean, he hit the nail on the head. Another thing is too, is like, what in life do you actually want to do at a minimal, right? I mean, sure, not everybody wants to go to work every day and they want to do the least amount they can there. But for our type of line, our line of work, our clients want as much money as possible and they want as many leads as possible. So why do the minimal when there's opportunities for potentially better results for you know taking it to the next level in other words or spending a little bit more money because that's what google likes to see yeah yeah like you famously said you know you got to spend money to make money right can't go to the casino without money and walk out that's it and if you do let me know because i'm gonna invest into you yeah right <laughs> and then circling back because i know you talk you guys talked a little bit about social media that is something that i also heard is going to be like super pretty much trending a lot in 2025 how do you think business owners should, you know, start going into social media marketing, especially, you know, with AI coming out and video production becoming more, you know, d dominant these days? Yeah. So most people who do like any sort of social media marketing, like they'll do like a post like once a month or like once a week or something like that. They're not really like looking at the views or the metrics, but the biggest thing is creating some sort of process for your social media presence. So leveraging something like AI, ChatGPT, to build out a content calendar each month. So at least you have the topics, but don't let AI take over you know, all of your social media completely. Like the biggest thing is having the human aspect of social media, because you, you, when you make a post that actually connects with somebody, you're gonna get so much more engagement. AI is not gonna be able to do that for you. So you, you leverage AI to be more systematized, to be more efficient, but make sure that you're creating these topics that you know your customers are gonna wanna see. Um, the biggest thing with social media is you have to have video content. You can't just be posting before and after pictures. They might be good, they might help boost credibility, but people want to see what it's like to actually work with your business. So create a video if you're a gutter company of you actually cutting the gutters on site and your crew in uh, uniform going up and hanging those gutters, shaking the customer's hand. That's what I would want to see as a customer. So just make sure you're building your content around that. That's a good point. And to kind of add to it, is like you said, is don't let AI just take over everything that you do because it is it's a computer based system, right? And like you mentioned, people still want that human touch. So AI is good for maybe getting out an extra three to four posts a month on your Facebook page, right? AI is good for automations. AI may be good for helping you write emails if you're not good with it. Don't use AI and go try to create an entire website thinking that it's gonna automatically be great because you use some fancy tool to create content. At the end of the day, AI is still a Google power tool. It is still an, an, you know, an inter a computer-based tool that 
it's it's good for a lot of things, but it's not good for everything. And it's crazy because he, hearing from what you guys are saying, it's good to implement some of these AI resources, but it's like you say, they, you know, it's it's lacking the creativity. You mm-hmm. need to have that human touch, that creative touch, because in working with AI, one of the things that I notice is you put whatever prompt you want in there, whether it is to write an email, to fill out a calendar or whatever, whatever AI comes up with, they're gonna use the same words. And you see that a lot. You say, picture this, take your business to new heights. You know, I, I feel like that's a lot of terms that people are seeing. So utilizing it to not, you know, use it to be creative, mm-hmm. but to enhance your creativity. And one thing's and another thing that you guys were getting at was using it for automations. Mm-hmm. I like where you were going with that. To like you know, people are trying to focus on using AI to create the biggest video or create the nicest website. But let's dive a little bit deeper into that. How can a home service business owner utilize AI for automations in their businesses? Well, there's a lot of changes happening with AI 2025. There's going to be a lot of different ways that businesses operate. So imagine a world where, you know, you can generate leads through a marketing campaign and without even having to lift a finger, they're already on a schedule for an estimate. So that's the power of AI in the world that we're living in. So we just partnered with a company called Drip Jobs and they can create these systematized processes to automatically follow up with leads, book them on a schedule to send automated reminders, just to make sure that they had a great experience overall. You're maintaining that communication. The best advice I ever heard about the home service industry is that you're selling a need. The only way you can justify a price for a need is by over delivering on value. So that's what you should really be thinking about into 2025. How do I automate these processes, especially if I'm a person that's missing out on phone calls, not getting back to a customer till the next day, Think of ways that you can streamline those processes with something like AI. Um, you know, it's just going to be a whole different ballgame in 2025. AI even has the ability to answer calls, and it sounds like another person on on the call. It sounds like another yep. person on the call. Mm-hmm. You have AI, but then again, you don't. Again, what I was getting at earlier is you don't want to over abuse AI because people are calling it out. In other words, mm-hmm. people are seeing a message, people are seeing something, and they're like, "Oh, that looks like AI," or "That sounds like AI." Um, one a prime example of what you were re, you know mentioning earlier with like the loss of human touch, which you don't want to get away from, mm-hmm. is that Coke commercial that's going around right now. Yeah. It is completely AI generated. Since when has Coke been known for making a Christmas commercial completely AI? So there's a big, huge, diversified um, feedback on it. Many are saying, oh, this is cool because it's technology. Many are saying like, this is classless or this lacks creativity because you just use a computer to do this. Um, and my question is, my my look on that is like, okay, so what's what's next? Are they gonna make the Budweiser's Clydesdale AI? <laughs> and then everyone's gonna be like, okay, this enough's enough. So you don't wanna over abuse it in terms, but system- yep. from systems, from following up with clients, from auto-generating, you know, uh, invoices, all that stuff. You know, a lot of that's been around for a while. To be, let's be real, mm-hmm. but it's getting better and better and better to where the owner operator can literally take a weight off of his chest by implementing the proper strategies for AI and things like you know drip jobs for automations or any other softwares that are in similar to that. So to just to give a quick recap of what we're talking about so far. Keep with the organic investment. Keep growing your Don't ever keep stop growing. Don't ever stop doing that. You got the money for ads, spend that on that. If you're doing social media, keep it organic, keep it genuine. I feel like what the audience wants to know is more about your story. Personable is a good word. Personable, exactly. That's the word we're looking for. Be personable to the customers that you're trying to speak because they're gonna buy into your branding, into your story, and that's how they're gonna want your services even more. And then using AI, and I can't wait to see how that live goes along because that's gonna be really cool to learn. Like you know, different strategies and these programs because you hear a lot of AI, AI, now it's time to learn about the programs that you can place into your businesses as well. Yeah, and that's huge. I think there's so much to learn about AI. And if you're a business owner that's really interested in like taking this and implementing it to your systems and to your operations, we're doing a masterclass on December 10th. It's at two o'clock PM. So I want you guys to join in and take the knowledge, man. It's free to you. Um, and that way you can really start to structure the business in 2025. This is something I'm gonna leverage AI for. This is something I'm gonna keep in-house. This is something you know that I'm gonna actually set in place versus something that maybe doesn't fit my business model. So it's all about balance it's all about finding the right fit Um, but if you want to learn more I would love for you guys to join us I also wanted to circle back because you guys did mention email marketing 
Where do you guys see email marketing going in 2025? Well, typically the main form of communication between a business and a customer is through email. So email marketing isn't going anywhere. But the biggest thing is, you know, understanding why you're following up with a customer, why you're sending them an email. If you're only reaching out via email to try to sell them on something, then they're probably not going to respond if they haven't already. But if you're shooting out value, you're shooting out a monthly newsletter, what's happening with the company, some changes that we're seeing in the industry, you know, that's something cool. That's something Something informative and that's gonna help build my trust as a customer so just think about the emails you're creating you can use AI to kind of you know build templates things of that nature but just remember to keep that human touch um, there's nothing more than just a friendly follow-up um, you know something more meaningful to a customer than like a friendly follow-up for example and the emails do always keep your name in front of them somehow some way in your inbox right you know most people though you know let's re let's be honest most people have tens of thousands of emails on their little icon on their phone right but the ones that do check their emails they you know that are good clients the ones that you have emailed back and forth it's good to continue to keep an email system and an email flow going for when that time comes that they actually do need your service maybe they didn't maybe they didn't buy it now or maybe in a year or so from now be you know that they they went a different direction and they need it fixed or whatever the case may be by having an email of like a drip campaign in other words to constantly have an email going out this just keeps you in front of the, the your potential customers this keeps them updated and it's just it's in other words it is a way to brand your business just like social media marketing just like Facebook just like Instagram you know that's all push marketing you're pushing your business out in front of somebody so therefore it's branding and also just trying to help you build the business and also generate leads along the way yeah and I love the saying every action has an equal and opposite reaction so let's just say you're following up via email you're sending out something informative you're saying at the top of mind per se even if you were a gutter company that just did like a gutter cleaning for example and then all of a sudden the neighbor comes in next door like you know I'm, I'm kind of thinking about getting my gutters done I don't know who to use and then last night boom they saw an email from you you're gonna be at the top of their mind to be on that conversation so think of that snowball effect and then it's not just limited to who you're actually emailing it's everybody they talk to that's really cool because from what I'm getting out of this whole conversation is that, yeah, there are so many things changing. Like 2025 is coming with so much new technology and programs that we have access to, whether you're an owner, operator, creator. But it's so cool to hear that these things that have been working in previous years are still going to work the same, if not even better, or it's going to amplify it. Good things don't die. Exactly. Yeah. They never do. The foundation doesn't change, just like, you know, the opportunities, there'll be more and more opportunities. Or the way to build the foundation or the way to structure after the foundation, you know, might change or adjust. But this things that we've all been doing for many years, even prior to us getting into this industry, have has all still been an effect, has all still been a strategy, an effective strategy. It's just, it just with the time with the change in time and the change of technology things just get a little different maybe a little bit better maybe a little bit harder for some people because more technology more technology but that's just the way of the world so the way the foundation has been the same to build a business forever it's just now implementing and staying on top of technology and the changing ways if that's what if that's what you're into and if you also obviously want your business to grow you know one topic that i do want to talk about when it comes to changing and what we see kind of just giving birth into like the, the age of marketing today is influencer marketing you know i see an uprise in that especially with business owners you know becoming you know working more on their own personal branding and becoming an influencer and i was thinking i see a lot of people you know getting into that but one of the cool things that i can think about you know for a business owner let's say if they don't want to be in the influencer seat they don't want to be on stage in front of the cameras i think it's a perfect opportunity to start networking and building relationships like you did with drip job and other partners that we have too both of y'all what do you guys feel about you know where influencer marketing is going and what could be the best opportunity you know to network with these influencers around yeah, I think the best way to partner with like an influencer is by meeting them face to face. So if you're at like a convention and it's somebody that you trust, somebody that's credible, it's like, okay, that can be a great partnership. Of course, if you're paying them X amount of dollars for every lead generated, they're going to start, you know, promoting your brand. They're going to start sending people your way. But what you don't want to happen is, you know, try to set up some partnership program just to make it happen, like kind of like half ass per se. Um, you know, you want to make sure whoever you're partnering with is going to proudly represent your business. Business. You're not just doing it just to do it. Yeah. 
I would say as far as an individual person, as a business owner, for example, looking into influencers, I would say you just need to follow the right ones because we are in a world where everybody and their brothers, mothers, and sisters want to be an influencer, think they can be an influencer because they have a, they have a circular light and, and a phone, and next thing you know, they want to become YouTube famous or they want to become an influencer in this world that we're in. Well, only so many make it because they're, they're, the, they're the ones people follow, the ones that provide true value. They've been in the game or they've owned a business or they and or own and operate a business currently and also just love to speak and talk to people and help people. You got to find the right influencers. You can't follow the wrong ones. With following the wrong influencers, you're going to have the wrong mindset. You're not going to have the proper mindset, the proper mindset for growth. You really got to understand this and just follow the right people. I mean, there's a, there's a saying out there for a reason of having people in your circle, you tend to adapt to their ways and their ability, you know, in, in general, whether it's bad or good. All this insight that you're sharing and seeing that we're about to end 2024 and jump into the new year, what do you think businesses should do to get ready for it? I think the biggest thing is, you know, creating your systems and processes. Like I think VAs are like a big up and coming thing now in today's age. There's so many things that they can do for the business. So if something's falling short on the admin side, on the follow-up side, you know, having a physical human that can learn your business operations, understand your business model, and then just keep adding value on top of that while being cost effective. I think that's huge. Uncover every pain point that you've had this, this year, previous years, and just write it down. Figure out what your biggest pain points are and how to solve those pain points. Um, as you mentioned, you just brought up VAs. One of the biggest things that I see personally as a consumer to technically our clients, I see it on the Facebook groups, I see it everywhere, and I mean like the local Facebook groups, is People are reaching out to businesses and no one's answering the damn phone or people aren't reaching back out to them or they're not following up or they got a quote and they never heard from the company. Those issues can be solved by a VA. Now, again, it's obviously great to have somebody in office working for you that lives up the street. A lot of, lot, of, lot of clients these days, though, don't have a brick and mortar business, don't have, or they might just have a warehouse or a shop where they park their trucks, have their supplies, do their thing, but they don't actually have an office that somebody can work out of. So now, you, sure, you can try to hire local and hire somebody at home, but then again, now you have to keep them occupied for a minimum of 35 to 40 hours a week. And realistically, not every single business can, can sustain that. So a VA is a solution to that. And yes, they're obviously not right there in front of you, but they have the ability to be trained to do every single thing for you minus physical activities. They can, they can, they can follow up, they can follow up with all your customers, they can help you generate reviews for your business, they can do day-to-day -day operations for your business, they can make phone calls for you. They, there's so much that they can actually do on the operation side from a simple phone and a laptop. So again, my personal opinion is to uncover your pain points, most pain points are I don't have enough help to do all the moving parts. So look into VAs, look into see what it may cost your business on a monthly basis, but just be sure before you just go up and hire somebody or a VA, make sure you have enough work for them to do for the month where it makes sense for your business. But again, my say on that is uncover your biggest pain points, write them down, find a solution to cross them off your list. Let's say somebody got to see this podcast, they really love what they were hearing, they give you guys a call and say, all right, where can I start? I don't really have much to work with. How does that conversation look like with somebody who's calling? Yeah, covering a lot of stones. Yeah, exactly. So we're basically, um, even before we hop on the call, we're looking at their online presence. We're looking at their socials, their website, their reviews, everything where their business is listed. Uh, if we don't see something that checks out, we're going to bring that to their attention. That way they can start working on that or we can start building strategies and taking the next steps to helping them be successful. So it all starts with a simple conversation, but then it you know leads to the strategy side of things once we're ready for that time. Yeah, just like he said, it starts off with a conversation. You know, um, we one of the biggest questions we ask is, you know, what is their goal? What do they want? What I mean, of course, everyone's goal is money, but like, what's your goal right now? Where do you stand currently? What's your goal in the next six months? What's your goal in the next year? Try to figure out where they currently are in the business. Understand their pain points. Understand their wants and needs and goals. 
um, and then just strategizing from there. Nothing is done with you know, a 20 minute conversation. The first conversation is usually kind of introduction, get to know each other, understand the person's business that we're gonna be potentially helping. And then from there, strategizing step by step what works for them in particular, because what works for them may not work for the next person as far as uh, the strategy and what to do first over what to do next. And it's true, you guys are there to give value and to see where they can go and how they can get to where they want to go. You guys help them build the goals, build the strategies behind that, you know, and of course, obviously your expertise and your services do come into play at some point and they realize that. Just give these guys a call, whatever you guys need, they're here to help you. I hope you guys got so much value in this episode today. It was awesome to see. And like I said, biggest takeaway for today was even though we're evolving into like a new, I guess, world of marketing, it's still the same thing. Keep implementing the same strategies. Listen to what these guys said. It's gonna bring a lot of value. It's gonna bring you a lot of leads, bring you a lot of revenue, guys. Thank you so much again. And until we catch you into the next episode of the Pipeline Podcast. We out. <laughs> <laughs>